You know how when they yell cut, they wouldn't stop. That's interesting. What? Yeah. <laughs> if you were Donna, what would you have said? I would have said... A waitress, rather, call um, the police. <laughs> and she was mistaken. <laughs> <laughs> for Along with your host, Charles Rosen. But look at that. Dean Kate and Dan probably got the best performance he ever gave. We're having a meeting here. Oh, at least there's one person on this forgot set that knows what they're doing. Larry Mullen. I had a friend named Craig Richland. There was, you know, there was still cocaine around and stuff. I always remembered him. I just kind of thought I would honor my, my coke dealer. Get out of here. <laughs> Pete Ferrero. Here's what I learned. It's possible Claire would have gone out with me. That was your <laughs> So sit back and relax because it's like totally time for the Beverly Hills. 90210 show. Just hold on to me tonight. Well, here we are again on the Beverly Hills 90210 show. We are covering the long goodbye from season seven. Uh, I am joined here by Larry Mullen. Uh, how are you? What's going on in the in the marina today? Uh, beautiful. Uh, the wind is a little picked up, but you know, spring is here. I mean, it was a beautiful morning. Uh, I was out in Santa Monica doing our a little bit of workout with our trainer. And uh, yeah, just ha- having some fun, and enjoying spring. You know, you can see, you know, you can just sense it's really here, and uh, it's nice. It's so nice. It's and so I'll nice. Be leaving, I'll be leaving in two in two weeks. <laughs> I'll be going to the East Coast, where it'll be kind of cold and, and dreary. I know. I don't know. You choose this very odd time of year to well, go. Well, if, if we don't go back there to our place there, we never get anything done because we haven't been there in six months, and you know, shit happens. Also joining us here is from Reddit, Brian Navarro. No relation to the f- fan that joins us, Barbara Navarro, everyone. Barbara, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Um, but how are you, man? What's going on on Reddit? Any big drama this week? Hopefully something. No, drama, no. The biggest post was, um, Larry was talking about this earlier, um, the one where somebody was saying um, they wish Steve had been the, the father to Andre's baby. So that was like a fun <laughs> little post that got a lot of attention. Nice. What do you think about that, Larry? Well, I think, you know, we... As we mentioned, I read somewhere, you know, there was some content somewhere. I can't remember who gave who pointed this out, but uh, Andrea never slept with any of the guys in the show. She was the only girl who did. That's so, right. So that was uh, that. And so this would presuppose that Steve slept with Andrea, of course. But uh, that well, it, uh, Andrea yeah. slept with everybody outside, like Dan, Ruben, yeah. and Jesse Vasquez, and this other and kid. And Peter, and Peter, and Peter, and Peter, Dr. Peter. What was the other kid's name? Uh, well, she, I don't know if she slept with him, the, uh, the the kid from high school. She didn't sleep with him. Oh, no. oh Jay, right? Yeah. I don't, no, I don't oh, think so. Jay. Oh, Jay. Jay? Well, we don't know if she slept with Jay. I don't think so, right? Mm. I don't think so. I don't think... No. Well, who what knows? about that teacher? What about that teacher? <laughs> Gil Myers. Gil Myers. Gil Myers. You know, that was pretty, that was pretty saucy at the time. It was hot and heavy. Um Larry, do you, did you do you know, did you do your car? You have to get put the battery back in your car. When I get to, uh, I always love when you tell us. I will go that. to the back of my property and put the hood up and look for that negative cable and put it on there and crank it up and then hopefully it'll just purr like kid. But I actually have two cars there now because my son's got one there, so I have to do it twice. But you know, AAA, you know, AAA plus is always good to have if you travel but, at all. Um, They'll this is the same car. It, we've been doing this podcast for a few years now. Well, no, that, well, that, that car, one car is a 1998 and one car is a 2001. They both have, you know, many miles on them, but they're island cars, what we call island cars. <laughs> I love it. They're not um, going to leave the island. Hey, I want to plug real quick before we get into the uh, the episode and our ad and all that stuff. Tori has a new podcast. Have you seen this, Larry? Yes, I saw it. Misspelling. I Misspelling. I mean, it's, kind of cool. I don't know if that, you know, was kind of like a haunting in a certain way. Or it's like kind of like making an error. Mis- oh, I, well, I think there is. I think, I think it was kind of a cool thing. And, and she had a very provocative photo for the uh, the, the artwork. And uh, we wish her the best, you know. I'm so excited for her. It's really personal. And I think it is honest and, and authentic. And I think it is about how maybe she's misunderstood, which is how that word, uh, why probably it's called misspelling. Oh, okay. um, like here's that. a clip. This is a clip. I'm going to play a clip. I'm going to play a clip for Tori. You know, why not? I think you thrive on it. (laughs) You thrive on the chaos. I thrive on chaos. Everyone would say that's not a good thing. No. Yeah. Gives me energy. It gives me, makes me feel like not dead inside. Uh, 
My lawyer says I just got a call from TMZ. I didn't speak to them, but they have the divorce file. Here goes the neighborhood. <laughs> I've never felt more alone in 50 years. Sorry. You are not alone. Really nice stuff. I'm I'm really well, I think Shannon led the way with her, you know, very, you know, personal, you know, her memoir her podcast, yeah, and, uh, which has been great. And maybe it gave everyone permission, you know, kind of this is a way to go and kind of cut out the middleman, just go directly to your fans and let them know how you're feeling. Because exactly, care. I think it's really they awesome. really care and they care about the Tory and yeah, I all for it. You know, I love it. I mean, I think it's really an inventive style. I'd love to sit next to her on the bed and hang out and, and ask some 90210 questions. You know what I mean? She's sitting on that bed there having a nice time. You know, uh, it's very, when she, when she said the thing about uh, a character who thrived on chaos, I remember when we pitched the Claire character, we used that exact expression. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. That's I kind of knew a girl who was like that. You know, she was a Scorpio. You just, you just were going to get into mm. trouble with this girl. She was just... Yeah, too yeah, it's very interesting. Yeah. All right, I'm going to play an ad. We'll come back and then we'll jump into the long goodbye. Hey, Beverly Hills 90210 fans. Check out all the latest rad stuff from the Beverly Hills 90210 show shop. They have everything you could possibly imagine. So, like, go there now, okay? Uh, Jessica says, Pete, Larry, Brian, love this team of co-hosts. Uh, hey, Barbara, Barbara says, I appreciate the shout out. Barbara Navarro here. Um, let's, that's about it. Oh, Chrissy Lee says, I found this podcast in the last couple of months, but I have been binging all episodes. Is it possible to contact someone to share how 90210 and someone on it I don't know what you're asking. But if you contact me, yeah. sure. Well, you know, that reminds me, we, we really should somewhere do, uh, not now, but maybe, uh, you know, as a, as a Thanksgiving show, do another uh, America's uh, zip code or some some big fan. We are due for a big it's, show. Uh, we should, we, we should, because, well, you know, those people who are in Planet 90210 and America's zip code, they've stayed loyal to us. Yes. And they're part of people we really enjoy having part of this community and they've they've built communities of friends with that and look at brian's here because of that basically totally i'm so happy that brian we, is a part of this do, we need to do that uh, before we get old we we need to do another big mania show you know a big, a big well, i think we yeah. probably need to do one one of both either you know the domestic show and then the, the national international show, show. Yeah, maybe maybe do it a, uh, a, week, yeah, a weekend we, event we should say that we did a special show to uh to uh israel we had a i'm trying to get the file and, larry i'm trying to get I'm, and uh, uh, <laughs> as part of just i'm trying to get the file so that we can air that but that's yeah, that's exactly. harder harder to do than you'd think uh, Melissa says Tori has always been brave to just let it all out on her personal project. I hope it gets her through all the chaos. Definitely agree with you on that. Uh, someone really likes the pinball machine. Okay, we're talking about. Oh, uh, somebody says Denise Young on Instagram said, "I sing hopelessly devoted to my daughter," which is going to be in this episode, um, the long goodbye. Now let's talk about the long goodbye. This is a big season seven episode. Were you? We watched it, Larry, together on the Watch Long on Patreon. Were you surprised by how many things that there are in this episode? I hadn't seen this episode in a long time. It's, a, <clears throat> I think, it's about four or five from the end. So we really are wrapping. You know, our storytelling is fine tuned. We've, we've earned all these moments, and uh, we've set it against. You know, in reality, like how college winds down. There's a senior uh, alpha keg talent show, and that's kind of a part of the fun part of the of the template. Uh, emotion bot passion bonding fun <clears throat> and uh i just uh i loved the emotional reality in this episode because there's some really strong things here i thought actually seeing it was one of the strongest ones of the season though probably you know under neglected it was a sweeps week episode so it probably had lots of competition it did okay in the range but didn't you know didn't kill and it's got you know lots of uh 
turns and twists and and you know it's basically Brandon breaking up with uh with Tracy because he thinks he's got a shot at at, at Kelly and, and 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 Tracy kind of you know doing a, a Hail Mary and enlisting Valerie to help her give her one more get her one more chance and Valerie kind of pulling off of Valerie giving Kelly uh, hope that Dylan has come to the airport to visit. Oh, and, this is, there's some great it, stuff. It, here. Really, it's very revealing, and then it pays off the ring in the end. So that that story is killer. There's there's a killer story with uh, Felice Martin and the guy we bring back from when she was cheating on uh, poor Dr. Martin. And this Dr. Martin, of course, is in a wheelchair, so it's even more <laughs> despicable. And, and then there's this great <laughs> loving story for, for our Claire, you know, which is heartfelt that she's got to oh, perform this thing she never performed for her mother. And Steve believes she can't sing a lick. Because she showed that she can't sing a lick. Yeah. And, it, and, it's, uh, and she has to win everybody over. It's wonderful. Well, let's look at all these different things that you just mentioned. Um, let's write out. Right well, out of before we do, we should just say this episode was directed by Les Shelton, who I have very little memory of. He only did two episodes, one, one that season. He was a spelling production guy who did, who Paul Wagner must have known. And he did a couple of episodes of this. He did a couple of episodes of, of all the spelling shows. And it was really the only 902 and 0 he did. I don't, I'm, I'm not. No, he did one other in the eighth season. Oh, I see. Okay, so he has come back and done a couple of things. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, but not enough to really say that he was a you know a, a big influence. But he does a very good job in this. Less, he's still around there above ground. Good job. And uh, the episode is uh, it says it's written by Ken Stringer, but I know uh, Phil Sabbath and I kind of basically did. This was all our story, and our and, and and in the end, my 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 computer going through it to make it all kind of work because. We knew where we were going here. We were really starting to hit a, hit a stride. I was like playing for my life here. I did not know that I was going to be uh, cut short and, and, and fired, basically, or let go. So I was really out there just trying to deliver, you know, real exploitable log lines and also earned moments of, of, that the fans would love. I, I mean, I have it. to be honest with you, like looking at this episode, I am shocked that you were not brought back because it's one of the best yeah. episodes of the of the series. Yeah, and I was going to say that Thank it, you. it's one of my favorites of the series. I think it's a fantastic episode. Um, and I'll get into Brian, more. Tell me more, Brian. Tell me more. I'm sorry, we always overshadow Brian, but I want to yeah. hear this since yeah. I'm getting some flowers I never got. And all, and all I ever got for this was grief. Yeah, it, it's actually, it is one of my favorite episodes of the series. And you know, I was when I was doing research for it, I actually found a post on Reddit from like five years ago where somebody asked, you know, what are your favorite episodes for each season? You know, so what's your favorite for season one, two? And this was my favorite for season seven. So even five years ago. I said, yeah, this is my favorite season seven episode. It's always been my favorite because it's very, it's very, it's like you said, it's emotionally driven. It's, it's, there's earned moments with all of the, the different things that are happening we've in built, it. We've been building up that ring. We've been building up the brand and drop, drop and Tracy, yeah. you know, and then we pull back the, you know, the fully, I mean, yeah, I mean, it just had a lot and it was kind of seamless. And, uh, well, let's look at the first clip right off the bat. We're gonna look at some clips, by the way. So if if the if YouTube goes out or so, just go to Instagram, go to Facebook. That's always happening. It, it happens every time. Uh, but right out the gate, just just. Relationship is back on track. Well, that did the trick. Uh -oh. Trace, uh, I don't know how to start this exactly, but I have to. What? I don't think we should see each other anymore. I mean, yeah. this has got to be what she's talking. Tracy must be talking about her therapist with every day, every week. Not, because, a, quiet, not a quiet dump. Um, because they, she thinks everything's going great. They make out the kiss, Larry. Let, you're you're big into the kiss. I, I'll tell you, Brand, Brandon is torn because he does. It's not that he doesn't like Tracy. He just likes. He just believes that his future is with Kelly, and and so he's into. He's he's like all guys. He's kind of sucked into the into the kiss, and and it becomes real for him. But then he knows he has a job to do as as the as the Boy Scout he is, and he has to come out and break it off. I mean, but that is shocking. That's trauma. To kiss and, someone, and thinking that was look. Right now, Jill yeah. Novak as Tracy looks so sexy and good here. I mean, and she does such a good job for us. And uh, 
she was, she was a pleasure. The look after the kiss, Brian. That was awful. Yeah. Imagine seeing that after you kiss somebody. You're so into it, and then you get that face. That's He's, dramatic. It's a shocked, almost like he he bit his mouth or something. Like something looks bitter. You know, he's just Jason is not happy with kissing this poor girl. <laughs> It's off of Brandon. All right. Well, we got to talk to Jill, uh, Tracy, a little bit, or who played Tracy a little bit earlier today. Here's the first of three things that she talked about. Okay. okay. All right. So uh, Larry and I are here with uh, our favorite, Tracy, Jill Novick. How are you? There, there's okay. we, we are looking at this episode, and there is so much good Tracy stuff in this episode. This is the episode called The Long Goodbye. So what do you remember about it? I remember, I think I was emotional. Because, that's why I asked if it was my last show. It was. I think it was. And I, I knew as Jill, the actor, that it was my last show. And I remember feeling, you know, sad and wishing that they would keep me i remember like thinking well they kept kathleen like what? why can't they keep tracy's character you know right um like even if i wasn't because i knew that they that i was kind of hired as a way to keep kelly and brandon apart for another season you know and i just remember thinking like why can't they just keep me and and either give me some other you know relationship Boy. or do something yeah um you take steve sanders fine you'll be fine I would have. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Steve sanders. <laughs> tracy would have taken it no um, <laughs> so 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 that's what i remember more than anything and i remember that we were doing double ups and i remember the wonderful beautiful i think i said this before but the goodbye that the two different casts gave me and the cake and i got this like um uh uh, oh, I can't remember, <laughs> like not leather, but suede. Um, I got a suede jacket with a patch inside, you know, that said- Who, nice. gave, the, who gave this to you? This is- I, I, The crew. I would, say, I would say Paul Paul Wagner, you know, would have, you know- Can he was created very, this for her? Yeah. He knew how to do things like that. You know, Paul was always very conscious of that. And he was, even though he was starting to fade out that year, he still, you know, did things like that a lot. It was really, really nice. Like those are my my biggest memories. Are you know the last shot that I did, and then having what that... was the what was the last shot? Do you remember? No memory whatsoever. <laughs> I'm old, you guys. I don't remember. <laughs> you are not old. You are so incredibly young. Please, yeah. and you look so young still too. All, all these, you know, this is a long time ago. This show, but you still look like Tracy. It's the thing that I'm. I'm. Most hey, hey uh, you look really you really look hot in this episode too. <laughs> <That's true. Larry. laughs> but um do you remember using any of your feelings of like this is the end for the breakup? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um you know it just it does, it becomes the personal stuff that's going on goes into the performance. So I do, I, I do feel like um you know, I, the 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 emotion came a lot easier because I was sad that it was. My uh, we have more. We have more of that in a little bit. Um, what did you think of that, Larry? Oh no, I I, I you know kind of know that. I mean, because she's been with the cast the whole you know for thirty two episodes, or or that would have been my twenty eight episodes or whatever. And uh, I don't. She doesn't even make you know, it to thirty two. You kind of bond the thing, and you kind of uh, get the routine. It's you kind of like it. You're just in your comfort zone, and all of a sudden they say goodbye. But you know, I, as I explained, sometimes you've been cast to serve the show. You know, your storyline is you are, you know, you are holding off Brandon and Kelly. You know, that's you know intentional. That's where we're going to go at the end of the season. We knew that at the beginning of the season. So that was always in the mind. We're going toward graduation and David and Donna and Brandon and Kelly. That's what we had. Uh, um, let's see. So uh, some people, Simon says the Brandon Tracy scenes in this episode were intense. Great stuff. I've always been a big Tracy fan. Uh, Jessica brings up the fact that she loves the Val Tracy scenes. Poor Tracy Val feeds her false hope to stick it to Kelly. Well, I didn't see it that way. <laughs> I, I think it's either, great to yeah. see it that way. <laughs> um, it does feel like the wrong person, she's talking to the wrong person. Look, when Brandon well, breaks up with her, she goes to talk to Valerie. 
this feels like the wrong person to talk to. But but, but Valerie but is successful. I mean, in other words, mm -hmm. that's the thing. This little gambit that Valerie does, which then she owns to Brandon, which is great. She kind of sends the false telegram. Because that's also kind of funny. In the 90s, there were still telegrams. You know, <laughs> so, so it's really not email was not really a thing. People, kids watching it today would say, what yeah. the fuck is a telegram? You know, there was and no telegram right at the airport. Yeah. Well, let's talk about that. Let's anyway. let let's look at a couple of these little a little of these clips because this is. I mean, I have to tell you of, of, of some of the stuff that's happening in this episode. This is some of the best stuff. You you are a genius, Larry, at bringing back a character without ever seeing the character. <laughs> we don't. We all we know is a little bit of more information about someone who's not even employed with the show anymore. This is this is how we're playing this out. Strawberry. That's just, it's the wrong clip. Ah, okay. shit. That's the wrong clip. That's so, that's really, it happens every week here. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's basically the clip is Kelly gets a telegram saying, you know, Dylan's going to be at the airport on a layover for about an hour and he wants to see her. Yeah. And the, so, and the dilemma for her is, okay, she got that. Now she's going to tell Brandon just when they've made plans to finally meet and perhaps reunite and recommit to each other. The and, thing about it is it's so it's so well written. The letter you wrote the letter, Valerie. Well, it's Valerie that wrote the yeah. the, the telegram. But I yeah. mean, you you wrote the telegram as Valerie as writing it as Dylan. I mean, this is real. <laughs> this, this is really deep. And but it's believable. It's believable. It's totally believe. That's what I'm saying. That the the, the everything that that mm -hmm. is said in the telegram is something Dylan may have said. Hey, stranger. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I know. It's just, you know, we kind of could hook her that way. And, and Valerie's going to try to show uh, Brandon that uh, Kelly's not worth his love. And Tracy is. And, and it almost works. It almost works. Well, and look, then, and then you guys got to cast a, a Dylan. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, really. I bought it when I was watching it. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's just you fucking know, it's just Dylan. A sad, thing, a sad moment. You think so, you have to, you know, this is how you could go to the airport. So you could wait for people to say, yeah, uh, I gate. know. I do miss that. I do miss that. They should uh, bring yeah, that back. Coming, it's, just, it's just so deflated. And she kind of has, you know, been made a fool of, really. And and rightfully so. She And she does own it by the end of the episode. Well, and the lookalike is, is nowhere near what Dylan looks like. So she's really disappointed because. <laughs> Uh, but good stuff. I mean, you're always keeping the characters alive. Always wanted to do that because it's in our mind that Dylan was kind of, you know, either living with Brenda or or whatever in, in London at that point uh, or visiting her because uh, this would have been after, you know, the death of Tony. And, you know, he kind of has been getting his head together. I think we do imply, right, am I right, that he kind of says at one point in season six or seven that he's with or season seven that he's uh, visiting Brenda. Yeah. It's mentioned like throughout like little sprinkles, like, Oh, Dylan and Brenda in London, like somebody will yeah. mention them. Yeah. I, I, I thought so. Yeah. No, look, I, as I've said many times, we were hoping these people would come back. Yes. You know, you know how they were, how important they were to the show. I mean, and we, you know, we, you know, we were so competitive, you know, ratings wise, we really wanted to beat everybody every freaking week. We were jocks. Just Candace 1976 says on Instagram, I was so sad when it wasn't Luke. But I feel like, I mean, now that we've been, I've been doing this podcast so long, I feel like we would have gotten the classic Fox ad, Dylan's oh, back. Yeah. One more <laughs> coming back to 90210. No, we, we did not dare let them promote that. That was not part, you, you didn't have the pro, we should have bring the promo up on this. I know, I, I was thinking about that. I forgot yeah, to pull that. No, we, they didn't, we wouldn't let them dare do that because we wouldn't want to let people down like that. But within the context of that, it's, it's good. It's a good It's a good twist and, and, it, and it works. And Valerie, you know, shows Brandon that Kelly was duplicitous. I mean, or, or not totally, you know, honest with him. And so she uh, has to, yeah, Kelly has to dig deep at the end. Hold on, Jessica, what's she saying? Oh, honestly, the show is never the same after Larry left. Oh, well, thank That's you. That's not flattery. It's the truth. Oh, well, there you go. Renee uh, B., yeah, Larry was for sure needed for season eight. Oh, what it could have been? It would have been... How about this, Larry? How about this, Larry? Larry had the heart. Larry had the heart and soul of nine hundred two one zero. The heart and soul, Larry. Well, I don't know what the season eight plus writers had, but it wasn't that. They didn't have the heart and soul. They had paychecks. 
Um, <laughs> 30, 32 of them, or, or they tried, they attempted to have 32 of them. Well, but, not uh, for nothing. The I mean, first they went the, out of their way. The first writer that they bring on got removed. So that's that's how smart it, well, it was. Because they, he inverted the show. As I've said, he inverted the template. You know, he, they weren't just, you know, ordinary kids living extraordinary lives. They were extraordinary kids living ordinary lives. Caitlin it's Ryan, I cannot believe they let Larry go after season seven. Such a horrible decision. Don't you wish you had all these people back then? They could have did a fan I, letter. You know, there was, you know, I was kind of cut loose. You know, I kind of finished up, and uh, I, as Chuck said, I was not, I was not escorted out of the building because they needed to the close, close up the the, uh, the two parter at the end of the season. But I kind of, uh, you know, made them pay for some other stuff that I didn't get to do. I was supposed to do a pilot there, and I kind of made them pay for that because I didn't have time, and they kind of didn't like that. And I, you know, but ultimately. I learned a Hollywood lesson. You really need the big agency behind you. It's not that they get you work, but they don't stop you from getting work. Mm. So when I went out, I had nobody to protect me, and just the big agencies did what they could to block, to not to help me. Uh, one of the other things that's going on here, so we talked good. about. Everything's good. I'm, gonna, I'm very, very grateful here. Sorry. <laughs> So you're good. Uh, one of the things that's going on is that Claire is going to sing in the talent show. This is my fa my my yeah, favorite Claire of uh, well, I don't know if it's my favorite because seeing Claire put a pair of handcuffs um, <laughs> is definitely right up at the top. But um, this this is really nice stuff, and it really gives her some depth here. The character of Claire. You know, you always hear or read some of those comments about Claire being snooty and all that stuff or bratty, and that's what I love about her. But this is a moment where she gets to sort of show uh, a vulnerable, more vulnerable sweet side where she's taking a chance uh, singing. It doesn't go well first. Shut the blinds. Claire, I'm the only one who can hear you. Know that I'm devoted to you. I'll never hurt you. I'll never lie. I'll never be. She told me. <laughs> she told She's so me. brave. She's so, so brave to do that. that is she, she, it's tone, tone deaf perfect. <laughs> she does do turn tone deaf perfect. Uh, <laughs> perfect. <laughs> Linda, Lindy says the turtleneck error. I do love Claire's turtleneck there, so uh, that's great. Uh, but now, she Larry, does. Go ahead, Ryan. But Larry, I, I asked you this like a while ago um, when we did the discussion on Reddit. Uh, who did had the idea for the Linda Ronstadt version? Because I am a big Linda Ronstadt fan. I even actually have that album that Claire's. Oh my god. Was. <laughs> I, I, I'm pretty sure uh, it would have been me because I, you know, so because I was kind of, you know, or, you know, I kind of was the musical guy, you know, as far as getting the ideas, then getting to Kenny Miller and, the, and those seasons. But I'm just trying to think. Devoted to you is it written by uh, Felix and the the Bordelais, or who's it written by? Devoted I to you. So. I know. Isn't the original like the Everly Brothers? They're, they're like That's the what I'm saying. They, yeah. they always. Uh, they always had they you know like they they had some a pair of songwriters a husband and wife pair of songwriters, mm -hmm. uh, Felix and Brian Bordelais or something like that that could be theirs, um, yeah it's just a beautiful song and it just it seemed to fit the bill and probably is I don't know if this episode has been banned on uh, Paramount Plus but I wouldn't be surprised because you know have to that's funny. It. They actually do play the version, the Linda version on the DVDs. It's it's in there. Okay, but what about what about and for anybody who like Maggie, if you're watching, like someone who watches Pluto TV every day, when they get to this episode, do they air this or do they skip it? I'm just curious because I'm. I mean, it's one thing to be on the DVDs. Oh my god, that'd be terrible if it was skipped. That would be just. I mean, it's the most important fucking you, moment of the of the. Of the yeah, how can you have it without it? How can you have also, it? Without we're building, it we're build, we're also, we're building up. You know, Stephen and Claire's relationship because oh, we're going to break them up very soon. We there already you know. know that. We know we're breaking them up. Oh my Melissa, god, Melissa Skillins. They skip it. They skip it. Oh. This is. This piece of shit. Are you kidding me? They skipped that? One Ugh. of the best episodes of the series. I can't even imagine it. They skipped the scene or they skipped the entire episode, Melissa. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm getting I'm getting hot. Yeah. Well, you're gonna well, see it, you're gonna see it here, and this will and it will be banned here very shortly. So here you go. <laughs> Your charm 
sublime Guess by now you know that I'm devoted to you So good. She pulled it off. I think I remember yeah, when we had her on the show. When we had her on the podcast, she she had talked about how she was surprised that she pulled that off. Yeah, <laughs> she was very game. I mean, this whole uh, you know the, this whole talent show is kind of fun because I am you know again, I guess we just kind of do a drag show, so to speak, to a Royal Canadian uh, mounted love affair, and you know we have a little bit of fun here. We have some specialty acts. We have uh, Jessica Klein's cousin uh, Julie Nathanson. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's her name. Is, I call her Julie funny. Peterson. I'm so I'm, I missed I miss that all. But this is what you're talking about with, uh, with Steve. Steve Sanders as his. We're just, I'm going to leave it off, so uh, we'll get to the big moments here. So I'm going to keep it very low in the background. No, Larry, you and Fred did the music for this, right? Uh, and Phil Sabbath, of which I I, I get about fifteen dollars a year in. The that's very time. nice. That's very nice that they do that for you. Um, oh, Smile, Laugh, yes, Sparkle it says it's the episodes on Amazon. Denise Young says it's not on Paramount or Pluto. So, I mean, it, just get get it together, guys. Yeah, fucking so kidding bad. me. It doesn't even make sense. Some episodes it's there. Some episodes it's not there. And this is good. Tori is what I mean. Yeah. She's great here. This is really some really great Tory stuff. You know, Tory is just a natural comedian and so entertaining. And this is like one example of her going totally outside the box of something and just making it great. Oh, yeah. I think Pete, you said when we were watching season eight together, um, Tori, she would have been fantastic on like an old school sitcom, like, you know, totally. the 70s sitcoms. Yeah, yes. like she ball. should Thank actually you. be in one. There should be a reboot of us, like, that kind of thing. Um, Very cute. Where did yeah. you come up with the talent show concept? You know, is this is this for, uh, again, always looking for incident an incident to you know to fill fill up and to have something where the whole cast can be involved in? I'm just going toward the end of the school year and the end of their of their college experience. We just kind of were kind of play out the keg alpha thing one more time, and the talent show seemed like a good you know background for a lot of things to play out. Um. Was that a Ken Stringer or is this? Is no, this no, that was that was me. That was me. Got it. Probably Phil, because Phil was a big. You know, both of us. You know, we we had a theater together in the seventies. That was our. You know, that whole that whole stuff was. You know, that that was kind of our, our thing. We had done variety stuff. You know, I I had done lots of that stuff. Uh, um, the other thing that I had written for orangutans at that point. <laughs> that's very, very true. Yes. Um, one other thing that happens here with Donna, you referenced this earlier. Um, I don't know how long of a clip I have here, but I mean, did you actually get the same actor? That's not the same guy, is it? Hey, what do you think, Brian? No, I, I don't think it is. No, I'm well, look at look at the brilliance of how you guys make it look as if it is the Let's same just actor. Take a look here. If it is, the poor guy went through a lot in those few years. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> He's yeah. I think yeah. we just tried to get close. I think we tried to get close, and maybe the guy had like a you know herpes for a couple of years. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but this becomes a big thing. She's very upset, uh, you know, Donna, because uh, her dad just had a stroke, and now here's her mother sitting in the audience with the man that she had an affair with. Like it feels very like suspicious. How, now, how about? Go ahead, Brian. I just want to say, Felice has no remorse about that season two thing. If you watch earlier in the episode, she sees the guy's name and she's smiling, laughing about it. Like, oh, he's going to be there. <laughs> Zero remorse. Yeah. You know, again, we, you know, unreliable narrator was a very important part of storytelling. Uh, what about that, Larry, pulling from something that you weren't even really a part of and I utilized? Just, it, but I was a part of it because I went to the characters and every bit of, you know, from their lives. I mean, so we always tried to make them as real as we could. And we knew the fans remembered, so we better fucking damn well remember. So uh, we felt that pressure. And so, yeah, that was just a great way to get to fill out, again, to her character, make it more real and to use what we have. We have a father now in a wheelchair and Donna's there. We want to, we need to fill up some pages. Again, you know, we're, 
you know, I'm, as as Jill said, we're shooting a double up here, so we need other people working besides Brandon. And you know, it, it becomes doing a series is creative, but it's also, as I've said, manufacturing. You're manufacturing. You've got to put out a certain amount of pages every day and fill up those pages. So that's all part of the fun. Uh, here's a little bit more of Jill sharing some of her thoughts. What's yeah. it like you getting, you know, so you knew that you would be there for the year, right? And for the yeah. season. And, yeah. but you get so ingrained in the culture of Beverly Hills 90210. You're probably friends with Tori. You're hanging yeah, out. With Tori, yes. You're hanging out. You're going places. You're doing things. You're, you're at the anniversary parties. And I've seen pictures of you with a cake. I think yes. there was like a, a hundred episode or something like yes, that. Right? Really hundred, cool. hundred, cool. hundred episode or something. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah, um, that's what it was. So it's hard, man. It's hard to have to say goodbye. And I remember getting the call about the Hawaii episode. Yeah, next season. Yeah, mm -hmm. because, okay, I remember feeling at the end that there really was no closure for Tracy. You know, it was just like one fight with Brandon and boom, she's done. So I remember yeah. feeling that. And then when I got that call to go to Hawaii. They brought I, her back, Larry, next Oh, year. my God. Yeah. For the... <laughs> For the season opener and i was like ecstatic and tori was ecstatic because she didn't like flying so she was happy to have me on the flight and it was the best trip ever so that yeah that that was really fun and i remember seeing the new cast brought in when we were in hawaii and yeah, having new people new people yeah, there, were, there were new people and i just remember feeling like why couldn't they have kept me uh, hey, you know, I was thinking about that. As I mentioned to you guys, if I brought her back and, and I was in the age, I would have brought her back as Ray's girlfriend. Right. <laughs> yeah. Just kind of like outsiders together, you know, make her right. into a heel. Do her, let her do a heel turn. He'll turn, yes. They didn't do that in season eight. Nope. She was like, she just wound up marrying somebody or. She's engaged to, uh, yeah, a, a guy. You know, she mentions the new people, and you know, when you think about it, I mean, obviously Hillary Swank didn't work out, so who knows? Maybe if they kept Tracy, that would have done something. Okay, but if we're going to be honest with each other here, if you were to keep, and I'm so sorry to be the person to say this, if you were going to bring anyone back, wouldn't it have been Susan? Wouldn't there have been more to play with with Susan than Tracy? Boy, it was never really even... Uh consider to bring either of them back never i, I think they were there for the you seasons know. that they at least were not at my level maybe yeah. i'm sure their agents or their managers must have been you know trying to lobby for it but uh we never felt the storytelling needed for it so here's another uh jill clip some heavy stuff too so there's a moment with jason where you call him a bastard remember that larry we watched yeah. that yes you bastard right so it wasn't just all emotional there was like some anger too which we don't well, really yeah. see out of tracy the range of emotions that you had to play in this i don't really i don't remember <laughs> i don't remember except for for i think what larry said is really true it's like it made it more realistic because that's kind of what happens, right? You, things are things are good, and then all of a sudden, something happens, and it just goes downhill, and you can't you <laughs> yeah. can't do anything to save it, you know. But what I like is you did try to save it with Valerie. You went, you know, like you did what people do. Can you just talk to him? Like you yeah. know, you're not willing to give up on this right. because you do believe there's love there, and there was. That's the thing that's so interesting. No, Brandon's so torn. He, he's he's not he, he just only doing it. But, you know, it's like measuring you know what's best best. Yeah, it's really cool. I thought that's what I liked best about it that you didn't. Jason had really nice things to say. I think we interviewed him about something else, and we ran into a a, a scene with you, and he said that you were really wonderful in it. I Remember that, that. Line recently? You saw that on uh, the Instagram. I saw it on yeah, <laughs> must have been on Instagram. Um, yeah. And yeah, that really, that, that was really nice. And for you working with Jason, I we've asked you that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I loved working with him. I let, you know, I remember saying this too, but like at the beginning, you know, it was really like weird because I had been watching the show. So it was really weird to be all of a sudden I was in it and, you know, I, it's hard at that age to not have a crush on every single one of them, you know? <laughs> like, um, 
So I just remember being just, I was really grateful. I was just really grateful. I, I We had a really fun time working together. Nice stuff from Jill uh, Novick, who was Tracy. Some people are saying uh, they like Tracy better than Susan. I'm, I'm seeing some comments like that. Sparkle said that. Something like I've seen that. a lot of turnaround um, on, on Reddit. You know, people used to really not be too kind to Tracy, but I think as the years go on and people are watching it over and over again, people are starting to gain more of appreciation for it. Well, I mean, you definitely want someone that, like, will fight back, you know, for you, right? Yeah. I mean, where Susan Keats took the job and took off, uh, and that she was out of here, like, Tracy fought. Tracy fought against Kelly to try to get Brandon's... Yeah. I love the towards the end. She has that. She pulls a Valerie. You know, she tries to seduce him. You know, she does the whole massaging thing. Let's talk about that. Yeah, let's talk about that, Larry. There's a scene. I didn't pull this clip, but they're in the they're in the <laughs> the newsroom. newsroom together, and it feels like she's trying to like get one more go go out of him. Yeah. You got to do what you got to do. I mean, you know, again, you love is you're not gonna. She didn't want to give up on it. Uh. That's what was kind of cool about it. Kind of everyone's kind of is going full, full, full flight here. I like it. Um, and then you know the Stephen Claire stuff is really tender. It's really I wanted serious. to show that actually because we talked about the song element of it, but the the actual moment of, of what makes it so good. It's yes, Claire singing on stage, but it is really this moment where she opens up. Kind of, I feel. I know she's opening up to Steve, but she opens up to the nine hundred two one zero universe too. But she didn't. I'm so proud of you for that. Well, I couldn't back out again. Again? I was supposed to sing that song in a fourth grade talent show. I practiced and practiced. It was supposed to be a big surprise for my mom. So what happened? I remember waiting in the wings and looking through the curtains, waiting for her to come, but she never did. And you wouldn't go on unless she was there, right? She died two years later. So you never got a chance to sing it for her, huh? Not until tonight. Really, really good stuff. I like it. I and just, you know, I Larry, I, I don't know if this was intentional, but again, there's another connection there because, you know, you have the whole aspect of, you know, she says that it's a song that her mother used to sing to her and, you know, it's really based around her mother. And um, there's the, also the connection that, you know, the song, the, the Linda Ronsan version, it's sung as lullaby. It comes off an album that, you know, it's all covers of songs sung as lullabies. It's popular songs sung as lullabies. So wow. it was a, even more of a connection there. Did you oh, know that, Larry? I didn't, I didn't realize that. Oh, we still haven't figured out who wrote the song, huh? Can no uh, check that out? No, Maybe let the, me pull out the liner notes. I'm going to do it right now. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, yeah. She's no, just I, beautiful. I love, She's... The way that, I love the way that is. Also, it gave a chance to see a softer side of Claire, which yes. she very rarely did. Yeah, you were right, Larry. It is it is um Bodlo and Brian. Oh, it is Bodlo and Brian, yeah, yeah. Yeah. They they you know they wrote all the great stuff. They, oh, Jesus. Um love, they wrote Love Hurts. <laughs> you know? But you're right about this. It is really nice to see that side of her. She's a beautiful actress, and I mean you really, really get to and beautiful as well, but you you really get to see her coming out of something here you know it's not about arguing with steve or or uh, it's it's her own story it's something that happened to her character and it's really well what well well written and it's really well executed as well you know it's what, a what, moment I, I have to confess one thing when i was listening to it just then and when she said oh my my mother never showed i was already thinking why didn't the mother show she was having an affair <laughs> <laughs> right. there's something we could bring back you know for, right. oh you uh, see you're, 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 right right right. you're always kind of writing 90210 it's, <laughs> the gaps are where, where's the openings but the the brilliance of this episode i guess um and we're talking about these these things that happened but it really is the ending the yes. brilliance of the ending because they go through this whole plot of an imaginary which is so brilliant that it's an imaginary uh brandon and dylan triangle because right, dylan, right. dylan is not even active in yeah. this triangle but he's where, where kelly is not truthful to brandon right to so she went to see dylan and that's why she was going to be late the brilliance of up. larry mullins 90210 triangles is the other person doesn't even have to be there. <laughs> doesn't have to appear on screen. No, right. 
But anyway, they get into this whole thing and Brandon confronts her. I don't know that I pulled the full clip, but I pulled a portion of it. Wait a minute, how do you know about Dylan? Well, were you following me? It doesn't matter how I know. The issue is you and Dylan. No, no, the issue is trust. What kind of relationship did you intend to build on spying? None. Not with a woman who's in love with another man. You think I'm still in love with Dylan? Yeah. Yeah, I do. I'm not in love with Dylan. Really? Then why did you go to meet him? Alone, secretly, all dressed up? I dressed up for you. I didn't think I was going to have time to go home and change before our date. I went to meet him because he's a friend. And he asked me to. And for one other reason. What's that? I wanted to tell him that I'd finally chosen. That's our ring. How'd you get it? I couldn't bear anyone else having it. Oh, my God. Such I, I don't know. I got to call Bull. I mean, why not tell what? Donna or anybody else that she's going to go to the airport? I don't know. Oh, uh, yeah, again, she's still again. Th there's a gray area there. No, no, no. She she basically was, did not want him to know. She's trying to you know paddle paddle upstream here, and she almost gets away with it because she got the ring thing, which is over. Yeah, I was going to say, the, I feel like she just pulled that out. It was like, oh, you know what? I got the ring. Let me use this. And just save I my know, ass. exactly. But I mean, still to get that, you know, we, we set that up a couple of episodes ago because that was in heaven. That was in. I don't even know what episode, but it was the one where Mariah comes. Hey, no, it's uh, Heaven Sent. Yeah, that's sent. the one with Mar yeah, it is Heaven, Mariah. It is Heaven Sent. Molly um, Campbell says she's always watching. Hello, Molly. It's always good to see you. You got to come back here on the podcast. We miss you tremendously. So uh, come back on. Uh, yeah, so Molly did fantastic costumes for the for the talent show. Oh my god! Yeah, we should have had her come on and talk about. Yeah, this. That, that's great stuff there. Thank you, sweet. Oh, smile! Yeah, I, I just think I think the ring thing. You know, we finally paid that back off. You know, we had the double switch where Brandon tries to get rid of the ring, then he returns the ring, and you know, it's, it's great stuff. It was just smile, really cool. laugh, sparkle. Getting a lot of comments in this today it says she, she's still in love with Dylan. I think she's talking about Kelly. Well, yeah, you want to keep that thing alive somewhat. I mean, you got to have another season or two. I, at this point, you know, I still think I'm coming back. Jessica says, "I think Susan was a better fit for Brandon, but in the year in the years that have passed, Tracy appears more and more sympathetic to me. I feel her pain. Tracy's pain more. Tracy's pain in this episode is the most I felt for a character that wasn't a main cast member in the show's ten seasons. Wow, mm, pretty good. That's a very um, strong statement. I and, and, and agree with it to it." To, to a degree. I, I do as well. I think, like she said, I think Tracy was the only character that was really marriage material of the ones that we'd seen. Yeah, she would have been a, 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 you in, have, the old, in the old school way of a marriage. Yeah, I think so. But, yeah. but she also could have had a career as, a, as an anchor woman. She was very good at that. And, you know, she's could easily have, you know, become a communications major and, you know, done her stuff, you know, become the weather girl. Jessica says, I love Pete's eternal crush on Claire. Adorable. Uh, I'm devoted to her. Right? Isn't that the song? In the <laughs> <laughs> you like that? Uh, Cindy says, Brian, love your passion for music. I can relate. Oh, I love that you pulled out the liner notes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Oh, Great here is somebody's. Uh, this is our friend Caitlin. Oh, fuck off, Kelly. <laughs> it hasn't even been two years since Dylan lost Tony. You'd think he'd give a fuck about you. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, oh, God, listen to this. That. Kelly is such no, a liar. No, 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 please indulge us, please. LMLAO, she cheated on Brandon with Dylan before. Why wouldn't she again? Point, counterpoint. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, you know. Oh, my God. All again, right. These are, these are flawed Beverly Hills children. You know, also, children, of, children of divorce. You know, They're not whole people. They don't make good choices all the time. Also, this was a television show. These are these are. These are <laughs> you know, the I do feel like a lot of the fans look out of that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, just all right, Brian, yeah, Brian. You gave me some uh, some things to read from Reddit. Let's Good. see what. Oh those yeah, these, things these are, are from the the discussion we did like ten months ago. I don't know what that means, but here's the first of the statements. Well, well, this is from a now deleted user, but um, they said, <laughs> "Why would Dylan send a telegram like in the?" Wait, wait hold up! I want to know why the person deleted their profile on Reddit. What mm -hmm. happened? There must have been some serious shit that went down with this person somewhere with nine hundred two one zero. Did you ban? Is this a ban? 
it, it could quite possibly could have been. You never know. But we'll anyways, this. Say, I love the scene between Brandon and Kelly. They are not forced. This episode closed the ring arc, like Larry said. Yes. Well written and bonded with the past. Really a great job. The kiss was and is beautiful, and she went back again to get him back. You don't have to believe those who come to check if you're still there for them, but believe those who come to pick you up. I love the two of them together. Oh. Nice. Nice. Okay. Yeah, Do we I have any thoughts about that? Well, we, we believe that. Don't think we're going to delete them again. We're deleting the user profile. We're not responding to it. <laughs> Let's see what's next. All right. Rachel, Rachel Bixby, Bixby says, yeah. I enjoyed this episode. I love Val meddling and Brandon and Tracy's relationship to prevent Brandon and Kelly from reuniting. I like that they have flashbacks back to season two. Things to do on a rainy day. One of my favorite episodes. A moment of continu continuity. Felice was a piece of work, but she was one of the most consistent characters in the series, despite the many changes in writers. That's true. Yeah. Well, the other thing, too, I wanted to just add about Felice. I always felt about 90210 that with that character and with that choice of the affair, that the show tried to distance themselves from that moment in season two because... You know, they police inevitably presents herself as this like conservative woman, right? And she would never have had an affair, supposedly. But I love that you went back and brought it back, and you know, went well, back we there. Also, we also get at her in the uh, in the Rose Queen stuff. Uh, she also that's right. Didn't she have a yes? Uh, she got pregnant. Uh, <laughs> she did. She, <laughs> some shit went down. Rose queen, you know? <laughs> yes. No. Right. That's oh, true. You know, God bless Catherine Cannon. She did, did a great job again, serving the show, playing you know our version of a parent heel, and uh, you know she was always good for that. I mean, she was a racist. She was anything but protect her daughter. She was, yes. was going to do it. Right. Literally. I mean, so I talked to her recently because I was watching an episode of Columbo, and Catherine did oh. an episode of Columbo. Oh, right. Nice. And she was, she just gave me all the inside scoop on that. And I just appreciate that so much, Catherine. We got to have Catherine back on. I don't know what for, but we need, we need, to, we need more Catherine Cannon. All right. Here's the last of the Reddits. All right. I posted this. I said, be for real, Brandon. You would be at the airport with bells on if you know, if you know who sent you a telegram. <laughs> well, yeah, there was. And it's really cool. I mean, because there really were still tel uh, uh, telegrams then, and it, and it was a good way you could really mask one if you had someone else send it. I mean, that was kind of you could do that fake telegram. Um, but Larry, not only that though, there it was a good play to play into um, going to see someone from an airport. Valerie is so sinister, knowing that at one point Brandon did do this to go see Emily, right? And she's you, you doing that with Dylan, so. Also, a very nice uh, callback. Um, good stuff. Yeah, I think this episode's really, really holds up. Brian, what did you think? Um, like I said, it's one of my favorite episodes of the series. I love it. There's so much. You know, you have the whole the Claire singing, the the telegram, which is it's devious but it's hilarious. I love Valerie. I love her scheming. Um, and yeah, the callback to the to um, Felice's affair, which, like you said, yeah, you know, it's it's a big thing, and then it's just never they kind of drop it up until pretty much now when they you know reference it again right right um go ahead larry well, we wanted to have so, so we didn't want just tori just to have a, have a goofy uh storyline here we had to kind of expand her part of it because again every episode you you want your stars to have you know good meaty meaty stuff in every every show i mean you, you try to balance it out i mean she wasn't leading the church she didn't have the big storylines here but you you need her you need her to be showing up now, so thinking about you you yeah. did a great job. Yeah, everybody, like you said, everybody has like a good, nice, sizable. Well, David role doesn't really. It. David doesn't have anything here. Well, he does. David when does nothing. Yeah, David has. Well, when, uh, they confront, when they confront, um. Oh, Felice, that's true. He has yeah. that little good scene. No, that's he's right. very, he's very, he's very good. He's trying to build. Actually, he has a good kiss with uh, uh, with Donna too. David and Donna have a good kiss in this episode. Also, David is really like sort of the 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 uh, peacemaker in that moment when when. Mm -hmm. Donna starts exploding on the man that may or may not be the same actor. Uh, he's very calm and level-headed and trying to get her to like have a conversation. And because let's, in fairness, they're talking about about um, 
the reason why those two characters are talking is not for an affair. It's because he's in charge of some medical stuff, and, yeah, and, he's, and she wants him to treat the father. Yeah, exactly. How awkward is that? You know, a guy that you were sleeping with, and now you're going to cure the the husband of the woman that you were having an affair with. That's going to be awkward. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm going to say two words: Beverly Hills. Yeah, exactly. I was just going to say, yeah, Beverly Hills. Part of, the, part of the culture. It's a small town. You know, you just got to kind of understand that, and you, especially if you're going, well, she probably went to Beverly Hills High School. This guy went to Beverly Hills High School. You know, yes. I'm with Chuck, and he kind of sees people. He goes, oh, yeah, he went to Beverly You know, he, he visits it where everyone he went to high school is still here. I miss Chuck this week. We need a, a, a big episode next week. Uh, he Jessica says, in my, He would have shared in my love for Linda Ronstadt if he was here. Oh, Between yeah, Tracy's pain, Claire's performance. I, I, have to tell you one, I actually uh, I stayed over once at her house at Malibu and helped her uh, uh, sandbag the beach from a big storm. It was in 1978. Oh, wow. Linda Ronstadt, was, uh, you mean? I was dating a, a friend of mine who was a musician, uh, Adam Mitchell. And we I was visiting L.A. for the first time to see if I was going to move there. And we all of a sudden ended up in the Mount Malibu colony. And they said they needed help. I said, yeah, I'll stay. And they said, well, you can stay over. And we had a great dinner together. And she couldn't have been more lovely. And uh, I don't know if Adam how he blew that relationship, but uh, it didn't end up too well. <laughs> Jessica, Jessica says between Tracy's pain, Claire's performance, and Brandon and Kelly and the ring ending, this is one of the best episodes in the series. I, I actually agree with that. Yeah. Oh, wow. Thanks, Jessica. It's always nice to hear the much maligned season seven. Lisa says, I love that Pete watches Columbo. Hello, Lisa. I hope you're having a wonderful week off. All right. Anything else that we need to say about this episode, guys? Did we cover it all? I yeah. think we just, yeah, I think we covered it. All right. Well, we'll be back next week with more fun and more 90210 show. Uh, thank you all for joining us this week. Bye-bye, guys. Have fun. Be well. Goodbye, Brian's.